Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Now, here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Whether you're tuning in on the radio dial in Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM, we welcome you. Are those joining us through one of our online affiliates around the world? We're glad to have all of you with us as well. We're excited to welcome Nicole Sousa to our program today. Now, Nicole's an interesting individual who's been able to not only discover her passion for acting, but also her love behind the camera as well. She's a writer and producer. We're going to talk to her about what it's been like for her to have a goal for herself, but also to be able to see that goal become a reality as well as some of the projects she has coming up that you all can be able to look forward to. Nicole, hello to you, and welcome to the program. Hello, Cyrus. Thank you for having me. Oh, the pleasure is definitely all mine. You know, I, I say that, that, you know, what you do fascinates me, Nicole, because there are so many people who talk about what they want to do. I want to be a writer. I want to be a producer. I want mm-hmm. to act. Um, but their actions don't always line up with that. I mean, here you have been able to, I mean, really to be able to say, I want to do something, and then you actually have the courage to be able to do it. I mean, what has it been like for you to be able to see the response so far to your work? Um. I think for me the main thing it's like you said like um, a lot of people want to and I'm very much the type of person like if I want to do something then I have to do it I have to figure it out a way and do it it might actually be because I'm somewhat impatient <laughs> so that so that comes to me in a way that's like okay I want to do this how can this be done because honestly I really think that anything you like absolutely everything is possible because there's always a way you know if you want to write something and you want to put it together especially in today's day and age where we have iphones and cameras aren't too expensive and you have so many creative people out there who may not be as big and well known so they'll be willing to collaborate with you because they want to create art also so if you find these kind of like-minded people who also have like this goal to create art and you kind of just get together and collaborate, you guys can make something work. Obviously, I've been able to do a lot of the projects that um, I've done because I've been able to find like-minded people who are just as dedicated. So we've put our resources, it's really about also pooling your resources. You know, what do I have at my disposal? Not so much looking at what you don't have, but what you do. Because if you really think about it, it's like, okay, so I need this to shoot. But I know about like five people. And out of those five people, maybe two of them have a camera, and if they don't, maybe they know somebody who does have a camera who might be able to let me use it for, you know, not too much. So it's kind of like a, about connecting the dots and seeing what is at your disposal and what you have to play with. Exactly. And and I think that, that takes, for one thing, it takes a lot of courage. Uh, Nicole, it also takes a lot of belief in oneself. I want to talk about that because, I mean, you have the other thing I noticed when I was prepping for your segment is that you're an individual who not only realizes, of course, the business side of what you do, but also you're heavily involved in the creative side as well. Do you think that that balance has kind of helped you to realize that even though you may have a passion for something, at the end of the day it is a business and you have to be willing to treat it that way? Absolutely. I actually, uh, well, I went to university for economics. I did a degree in economics. So I was really able to decide because, of course, we love art and it is creative, but at the end of the day, you know, we all need to pay rent. We all need to eat food. So we need to find a way where what you love to do needs something that um, is sustainable, that will allow you to be able to, like, live off of what it is that you enjoy doing. So having that in mind, I figured out that, you know, there is a business side to this and, like, what makes sense? So what is popular? What is What are people interested in watching right now? And how exactly, you know, learning and knowing how the business side works is also extremely important because as actors, we're so used to just being in front of the camera and that's all that we, you know, that's all that matters and that's all that we are focused on, just get on set and remember your lines and, you know, all the character work and doing all of that. But there is so much more that goes into it, which is what I discovered when I actually first started producing. It was just so many people on set that didn't even get, you know, the credit. You have the gaffers and the lighting people and the grips and people who, you know, you probably didn't even know that that was a job that they have to do. But without them, you wouldn't have 
the final shiny project that we all go to see in the cinemas. You know, it's so much more than just the actors. So seeing exactly. from the other side and having that level of respect and understanding for the whole team, you know, as a cognate, has been also like such a really great experience. Because if you're also able to meet that, those behind the scenes people, again, there you are meeting new people who can also create with you. Because while you're doing the creative aspect, they'll be doing the technical aspects. And you build that level of trust because you both want to create. Right. I think that's true. You know, we talk about it a lot on this program, uh, Nicole, as the pieces of the puzzle. I mean, you know, we a lot of people focus on the end result, but they don't realize the little pieces of the puzzle that have to be in place mm-hmm. in order for the full picture to be realized. There's something to be said, though, about what you just said, Nicole, and that is the trust aspect. We can't, I don't think we can talk about that enough in that these people trust you. They trust your vision. They trust your passion. What mm-hmm. has that been like for you to have that kind of trust that people want want to see your project succeed? Um, honestly, I feel so, so incredibly blessed and lucky to have these people trust me and believe in my project and believe in my vision. And I think it comes from the fact that I, I'm just, I'm genuine. You know, I'm, this is what I genuinely want to do. I'm genuine about wanting to tell this story. And I think when you are genuine, it appeal to people. They're attracted to that because it's like this person is being open with me and I see their vision and there's no ulterior motive. They simply just want to create. And I think that's what attracts people to want to work with you, you know, and having that level of respect and admiration and understanding. Like when I'm on set, I'm so, um, I make sure I do everybody and those are the people, even those are like the assistants who are, you know, just made to like grab coffee because Everybody is so vital and important, and it's having that respect for everybody around you and understanding and knowing that no one is above or below anybody else. They're all on the same level. You know, we all have, we're all human beings. So I think that that's something that allows people to, um, I guess, trust me because of that genuineness and I'm just very, I'm truthful and open, and I have that level of respect for everybody because they're all out here trying to do the same thing. And another right. thing that I also think of is that um, a lot of the times people tend to be like, oh, this person knows so much and this person is an expert at this. And at the end of the day, uh, what I've really learned is that everybody is just trying to figure it out. You get put in a situation and you learn to figure out how it works, and that's how you become a CEO or the owner of this business. Because when you first started, you probably didn't know anything about it, and you learn as you right. go along. I think all of us in general, no matter what we do, we're just trying to figure it out. And then when we find things that work, it's like, oh, okay, so let me now hone this and work on this because I see that this is how it's working and this is how it works, you know? Right. I think that is so true, Nicole, and I think that the way you just expressed that is something that all of us can kind of relate to that are in the creative community for sure. I want to say for those who are just tuning in on the radio side or online, you're listening to Conversations Live. Nicole Sousa is our guest for the segment. She's not only an actress, she's a, a producer and a writer, an individual who's been able to, to see her, her goals and dreams uh, become a reality and been able to work with other like-minded individuals be to bring these projects to life. You've been able to work on shorts. You've been working, able to work on, on on TV projects, and now, of course, the TV movie I referenced to you before we began the segment, the studio. Um, do you find that you're more comfortable in front of the camera, Nicole, or behind the camera, or do you find equally uh, as as passionate for you? I, I definitely think uh, it's, an, it's equally. I mean, I love being in front of the camera. I started out as an actress, you know, and I've loved that. But I have to tell you, writing has been incredibly enlightening for me. When I first started, it was kind of like, okay, I'm really tired of there not being enough roles for women of color. I'm just going to write something, you know. I was in acting school, and I was just never cast as like a strong, you know, woman of color or even any something diverse and interesting. So I was just so frustrated that I just started writing. But out of that, I realized that I actually love it, and I had so many stories to tell based on my based on my experiences, based on um, the surroundings I've been in and my friends, and that's kind of how it started until it got to a point where ideas would just come to me and I would just have to write it down. I just have to write, you know. 
sometimes I'm with my friends and they're always making fun of me because I'm like, wait, wait, say that again? I need to write that down. That would be great. <laughs> and then it's kind of like an effect where it just starts to grow. And my friend's like, oh, my God, Nicole, please. Are you going to write that down too? And I'm like, yep, that was great material. Thanks. <laughs> you know, so right. much of our real life is great material for writing. And that's what I've just, you know, started doing because I'm like, you know what, let me share my experiences because I'm not the only one going through it. And it would be, you know, it's nice when you go and watch something and you're like, oh, my God, I can relate to this. You yes. know? Right, for sure. Yeah. And to, and and also, Nicole, we should say that, you know, I mentioned earlier about the people who are working with you. You are giving people on the outside, I think, the courage to say, you know what, if Nicole could do this, if she could, you know, mm-hmm. take an idea and turn it into a project, then maybe I can do it too. Is that also part of your hope? Absolutely. I'm always talking to my other friends who are actors, and they're like, oh, I have this thing, and I'm like, oh, my God, go out there and write, you know, follow this experience, listen to what is, you know, what it's telling you, because you can't just sit down and wait for them to create the roles for you. You can't do it, because what are you going to, you're just going to sit down, and you're going to become frustrated, and it's like, have the courage to just do it. Just just take the first step to be like, okay, what's the first thing that I can do? And I'm not going to lie and tell you that it's really easy. It's not, I, you know. I had a lot of um, disappointments in the beginning, a lot of setbacks, a lot of, um, you know, just things not working out right, a lot of losses. And I, there were so many times I was like, oh, my God, what is the point in doing all of this? I just, I don't want to do it anymore. But then there was always something inside of me that was like, uh-uh, no way, you're not allowed to. You can't stop. Because if you stop, if you stop doing what it is that you love doing, what do you have left? What are you going to be? What are you going to do? There's no way. Right. Yeah, someone can you know, knock you down. Yeah, this can work. This can fail. The door can close in front of you. But you know what? There's a window that you can find. There's another door that you can build. There is always another way. Like, you just have to open your mindset and really look at everything. Really look at all the options facing you. Never let one setback, two set, five setbacks. If you fall down five times, get up six. You know, it's that kind of mentality. Right. And we're all human, so we all have those down days, you know. We all have those, oh, what am I doing? This isn't going anywhere. Whatever you do, you have that day, you feel like that, but then you have to just get back up and you have to continue fighting, you know. I'm doing it. Right. You can do it too. We can all do it. It's possible. I don't think we should see the people who are our heroes and our inspirations as that much further away from us because they were at one point in their lives and their careers where we are right now. So it's just about working, like, it sounds like a cliche when people are like, just don't give up, but that's just the secret. The only difference right. between us and someone who's done it is that they didn't stop when they got rejected or when they heard the, like, 500th no. They just kept going, you know? Yeah. Right. Well, Nicole, you bring up something that I have to ask you about because I think we've all heard the saying, you know, you fall down, you get back up, and, you know, don't let the no stop. And we've all heard that, <laughs> but then when you mm-hmm. get the no... Uh, would you get the door slammed in your face uh, when it seems like every, you know, letter is a rejection letter? Um, I, and how how did you get to a place, and I'm sure our audience wants to know this too, how did you get to a place when you realized that you could not allow someone else to stop you in pursuing your goals and dreams? How, how did I get to that place? Honestly, yeah. I think it was um, – I want to say about last summer when I first started writing and producing, there was actually a day when it just everything had kind of fallen apart because I had worked really hard. I had found a whole team to work on the project, and literally a week before filming, everybody pulled out because they were doing it for not that much money, and, you know, whenever that happens, it's hard. Everybody pulled out. It was literally me and my friend who were producing it, and we went into this ice cream shop in, in New York. It's called Off the Wall. It's amazing. And we literally cried in the ice cream shop because we're like, all we want to do is tell a story, and everything is against us, and what is the whole point? And it was at some point in between there and eating, you know, my chocolate and the net ice cream that I just realized that I'm not going to... I'm not going to go down this way. No way. Nobody else has, op- no one has the right to tell me that I can't do something that I love. That's giving the power to the other person and it's your life and you're in control of your life. Um, my mom's always told me that you have to be responsible for your life. 
So anytime I'd be like, oh, mom, something's wrong, or I'm bored, she's like, you're bored because you're boring, you know? This <laughs> happens because of you. It's you. You're responsible for your life. She's always said, take responsibility. So I thought, you know, in here, and everybody's pulled out, but you know what? It's my project. It's my life. So I'm going to take responsibility for it, and I'm going to just try something else. And that's actually when I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a shot in the dark. I'm going to write out my concepts, and I'm going to try and reach out to people for investment so I can actually get money. And literally, a couple of days later, we got somebody who was willing to invest. And it was, like, insane. It was insane because it started off as this idea of trying to get students to do it for free with no money. Everybody had pulled out, you know, and I'm thinking that this is the end. Like, oh, I had this idea, and it's not going to come to fruition. And then because I was, you know, let down because they all pulled out, I had the courage to be like, well, you know what? I've got nothing to lose. Let me just reach out to people. And from that, I was right. able to get an investor and able to get a really good team behind it, you know? So right. a lot of the time when a door closes, it could be an opportunity opening. You know, not could be. Not most definitely is because that's the way life works. Sometimes something doesn't work out because something better is waiting for you around the corner. And I really found that with that experience, you know, from going to having absolutely, you know, no, no way of doing this project to suddenly we have a budget. Suddenly we're able to, you know, work with people who have experience. And it, it just happened like that. But it was because I decided that I was the one who was going to take responsibility and make it happen. Yeah. I think that is so so amazing. Now, one of the projects I've heard you talk about, Nicole, is actually one I think that comes out actually um, next year, if I remember correctly, and that's the studio. Um, there are, of course, other projects you've been working on. I mean, talk to us about the studio and why, why you think the buzz around it has been so good so far. Um, <laughs> the studio, that's a fun little story. I think the buzz has been so good because, again, when something comes from a truthful place, it's easier for people to – um, relate to, and that kind of was inspired by uh, just me moving out here to LA and the whole cultural background. Because originally I was born in Angola, and it's so different culturally, like different experiences. I find myself um, talking to my friends here in LA, and a lot of the times I'm like, "Wait, what does that mean? What is that like slang and like little customs that you know they have over here that I'm not used to, or that we have over in Angola, or even like." customs from London, you know, because I've moved around so much. There's so many, like, different cultural aspects, and I find it so interesting. And it's also really funny. So the mm. studio is kind of based on um, these two girls. One is from a really big family in Angola, and she moved from Angola to Los Angeles to work at this um, social media company. And it's really funny because it's this whole satire um the social media company is actually doing really badly. It's failing. It's basically started up by this guy who's a complete moron, you know. And uh, because it's really popular to hire a woman of color, he's like, oh, let's hire a woman of color. Maybe that's going to make our company fail less. And so he flies to Africa, to Angola, to hire a woman of color. You know, it's that kind of ridiculous <laughs> satirical comedy. And right. so they moved from Angola uh, to Los Angeles, and he's like, hey, contact this person, rent out the studio apartment. But this person is, like, in the middle of a sticky divorce, so they've rented the apartment to me while their wife has rented the apartment to this other girl, and this girl is completely crazy. She's, like, this kooky girl from Minnesota, and her dream is to become a news reporter, but she tells the news playing the ukulele. So she wants to, well, she's forced to move to L.A. because her parents have um, sold the house to go off on an archaeological dig. Like, again, it's very satirical. It's this, like, ridiculous comedy thing. So you have this girl who's, like, kind of lonely, not used to, you know, being by herself. So she actually loves the idea of having to share a studio. Whereas um, my character, who's coming from Angola, who's coming from a huge family, is kind of like, well, I can't wait to just be alone. And it's about right. how these who come to this, you know, they come to a head having to share this tiny space with two, someone who's completely, you know, the opposite of you, and you have nothing in common, and it's all these, like, cultural differences, and it's just, like, really fun. And it's, I think it's a fun thing for people to watch and, like, learn about, you know, cultural differences and just being able to, like, also accept and, like, how we can be more compassionate and understand each other. Because a lot of the times I feel like, 
we have conflict with people, but it's also because we don't try to understand where they're coming from, you know? Right. So I think that's that really, so like, explores that. Yeah. And I think that's the great thing. And, you know, it, it's and I think that is what all of us can appreciate, too, to embrace what it is that makes us unique um, and, and, and be mm-hmm. able to use that and realize that's what makes the world interesting. And it's great that you're able to bring characters like that to life, be able to write characters like that, um, Nicole, that are not out there, and to be able to share these stories again that only you can tell. And I think, again, that's the advice for all of us, that no one has the gift that we have. It's up to us to be able to use that gift to the best exactly. of our ability. Yeah, because you never know what's going to come out of it, just like with this project at the studio. Again, everyone, Nicole Sousa has been our guest. Great conversation with you, Nicole. Nicole, how can our audience stay connected with you? Um, they can follow me on uh, Facebook. My Facebook page is Yay the Nicole. And also uh, find me on Instagram, and my Instagram is nsousa1. So they can okay. keep up with me on that. All right. So make sure you all are definitely staying connected with Nicole. Nicole, congratulations to you again, and thank you so much for the time today. really appreciate you stopping by. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, the pleasure is definitely all mine. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Make sure you take out time to enjoy some good music as well as a great book. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live today. You all make it a great one.